Formula One has had some issues with equal representation in the sport for decades now. To be precise, it's not just Formula One, but the whole of motorsport. There has been a very low number of female drivers in the sport for years, and that does not seem to likely change in the near future. This has led to frustration among many people, including Mercedes boss Toto Wolff. This and more in today's video. First, let's start with the question that most of you are probably asking. Is F1 mixed gender? Formula One is called the pinnacle of motorsports for a reason. It's racing at the very best and cutting edge of car technology. But if there's one thing F1 still needs to work on, it's being more open to everyone. Since the 1970s, F1 has been home to the best drivers in all of motorsports. F1 has given us drivers like Juan Manuel Fangio, Ayrton Senna, Michael Schumacher, Elon Prost, and Lewis Hamilton. But it's important to point out that all these great drivers are men. This is because women still haven't found a way to compete head-to-head -head with men in Formula One. It could happen very soon, but so far, with a few exceptions, it hasn't. The problem isn't that women have never been in F1 or never driven in F1, but that they haven't regularly competed in F1. Many women have raced on an F1 track during an F1 weekend in the past. Some of them have even competed in a real Grand Prix. Maria Teresa de Filippis was the first woman to race in an F1 Grand Prix GP. In 1958, she ran in five races and came in 10th at Spa. Lella Lombardi was another woman who broke new ground. From 1974 to 1976, she raced in F1 17 times. Susie Wolf, Giovanna Amati, Desiree Wilson, and Davina Galissa are some other women who have been in F1. On paper, there is no rule in F1, FIA, or any motorsport in the world that says women can't join. So the short answer to the question of whether or not F1 is mixed gender is yes, but on the other hand, it's just on paper. Even so, there haven't been any regular women drivers in F1 for many reasons, such as money, lack of support from fans, and problems with the way the sport is run as a whole. Even though there's a racing league for women called W Series, it hasn't really broken down the barrier that keeps women from getting into F1. So the best way to get past this barrier in the future wouldn't be to start or improve a separate series for women. Instead, it would be to promote them in Formula One. Given this, we can see why Formula One boss Toto Wolff is still upset about his wife's racing career. When Mercedes boss Toto Wolff talks about his wife's racing career, he says it makes him sad. Susie was a great driver. She was so good that in 2014, she was the first woman to race in a Formula One session since 1992. Susie, who was Williams' test driver at the time, got in the car for practice for the British Grand Prix and came in 15th out of 22. She was within a few tenths of Williams driver Philippe Massa. Wolf told the Financial Times during an interview, the final chance was denied. Never had the courage to call. Wolf still feels bad that his wife didn't get a Formula One seat, even though he had the power at Mercedes to give her one, even if it meant Lewis Hamilton or Nico Rosberg had to give up theirs. He thinks that a grid with people of both sexes in the next 10 years is not realistic. Wolf made a joke about a stereotype when she said, I'm sure there are girls out there that can make it on merit. We really understand his frustration and admit that Susie clearly was a great driver. The fact that she managed to finish 15th out of 22 in a practice session that consisted of all male drivers is a clear indication that women can also participate in the sport and succeed. So for all of you F1 female enthusiasts viewing this video, psych yourselves up and go for some tryouts whenever you hear of some. Maybe offer your services to Alpine as it seems they may lack drivers for the next season. Next, while still on the topic of women's representation in the sports, Jamie Chadwick is dominating W Series again, but her struggles to advance her career exemplifies barriers women face in racing. In the tough world of junior series racing, sometimes careers end a long time before they should. This is especially true for women, who often have smaller budgets and fewer opportunities at work than men in similar jobs. When asked why she hadn't raced for a long time, 2019 W Series runner-up Alice Powell said, I didn't run out of talent. Finding a female driver who can make it to Formula One seems more important than ever. But Jamie Chadwick, who is about to win her third W Series championship, can't seem to get out of the regional Formula 3 series and move up the ranks. The W Series is almost the only junior series that doesn't make the winner move on to the next round. If you win either Formula 3 or Formula 2, you can't come back the next year. It's a system that has its own problems, and talented drivers often have to wait a year making tea in the back of an F1 team's garage before they can move up. But because of the way the W Series works, Chadwick is now fighting for, or more accurately, taking a third title with almost no competition. Her future, on the other hand, isn't clear, and she doesn't know what she'll do after the summer break. The championship will start back up again on September 30th in Singapore, or how she'll take that step to move on from a championship that's meant to be a stepping stone. Chadwick can't come back for a fourth season of W Series, both for her own good and for the sake of the championship. Less clear is what she'll do next, especially since she turned 24 and the professional part of her career seems tantalizingly close but out of reach. Moving on to other related news. Is Colton Herta the next big American name in F1? Just call it Colton Herta's strange case. This weekend is the third to last race of the 2022 IndyCar season and the last oval race of the year at the A-shaped Worldwide Technology Raceway outside St. Louis. The real-time storyline on Saturday night will be the seven drivers who are only 59 points apart from the championship trophy. The battle between the drivers in their 40s will be especially interesting as leader willpower tries to hold off Scott Dixon, who has come back strong this summer and wants to tie the record with the seventh title. But the eyes of the Formula One world, as they have been all season, will be on the kid who is almost half their age. 135 points behind
behind, ranked 10th after some bad luck in the middle of the season, and will probably be mathematically out of the title race this weekend. It doesn't matter. Not among the F1 fans, not to the American F1 audience, which seems to be growing all the time, and definitely not to even more important group of American companies that want to put their logos on a car that an American racer drives in Formula 1. Almost all these people have already said that Herta should be that driver, the one chosen. He will finally bring balance to the forces of open-wheel racing, not the force. Finally, Antonio Giovinazzi to get two Friday practice runs for Haas. Antonio Giovinazzi, who is a backup driver for Ferrari, will drive for Haas in two practice sessions this year. Giovinazzi will replace Kevin Magnussen and Mick Shoemaker at the start of the Italian and U.S. Grand Prix. This will be his first time driving the new generation of Formula 1 race cars. The move comes at a time when Shoemaker's future with the team is becoming less clear. Shoemaker is the son of Michael Shoemaker, who won seven world championships. He is in the last year of his contract, and even though he finally got Formula 1 points in Britain and Austria, he has cost the team a lot of money to fix, because he has been in a lot of crashes this year. Giovinazzi, who raced for Alfa Romero for three years, seems like the most likely person to take his place if Haas wanted to try something different. Even though Haas and Ferrari work closely together on the technical side, the American team has always been able to choose its drivers on its own. Team leader Gunther Steiner said that Giovinazzi will help Haas figure out how good its car is right now. Haas made a change in Hungary that it plans to put on both cars for the next three races, which start with the Belgian Grand Prix this weekend. Daniel Ricciardo is not likely to race for Haas next year, based on the market for drivers this year. Before the Hungarian Grand Prix, Steiner called the driver who had won eight races. Ricciardo seems to be heading for an early exit from McLaren, but Alpine appears the most logical destination for him to go in in 2023. Unfortunately, guys, that is all we have time for today. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Till next time, cheers!